Why do people get thin shots and top shots? Where would we start? Well, it's not because they picked their head up. <laughs> yeah, right, okay, so establish let's, that first. Let's do that. <laughs> yeah. So I would say the first thing in order would be the left arm and shaft, keeping that in line, no, no breaking, don't break the radius down. So we would set up, we'd keep our arms close together, and we would just keep that uh, same sensation. So say the butt of the club to our sternum, let's just say it's 20 inches, give or take. Keep the 20 inches. How does that be number one? Number two, number two and three would be on our backswing. Our head stays on the wall, so our body stays the same inclination to the ground. We're not raising up. So head on the wall on the backswing, and then head on the wall again on the follow through. Same thing, keep the inclination constant to the ground. So if we keep our inclination constant to the ground, and we keep the radius locked in, I could swing back and through, and I'd hit the ground every single time. Yeah. Impossible to not hit the ground. Right, right. Hey guys, Eric here back outside at the Bethlehem Golf Club. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to fix top shots and thin shots, and really the three biggest reasons that cause those and drills for all of those to fix them. Now I'm here with Steve Siraki to my left. You guys have seen Steve in some of the videos before. Uh, Steve and I coach together at CogornoGolf.com. Steve also does in-person lessons at Woodcrest Country Club in New Jersey. If you guys are interested in in-person lessons, would highly recommend Steve. Uh, we'll include his info in the description down below. If you guys are interested in online coaching, Steve and I would love to work with you, help build you a personal plan and give you personal feedback for what you need to work on in your swing, really to take your game to the next level and ultimately improve faster. We'll put a link for Cogorno Golf down in the description uh, down below. So Steve, unfortunately, one of the things we see all the time, right, in terms of contact issues yep. that comes up that's common is both the thin shot and a top shot. Yep. And there's three things that we would say would be really the biggest reasons that those happen. Yep. And the three biggest things someone could do to be able to fix both of those. Yeah. And so if we flip spots here, and let's talk about those three things. Steve, why do people get thin shots and top shots? Where would we start? Well, it's not because they picked their head up. <laughs> yeah, right, okay, so establish let's, that first. Let's do that. <laughs> yeah. So I would say the first thing in order would be the left arm and shaft, keeping that in line, no, no breaking. Don't break the radius down. So we would set up, we'd keep our arms close together, and we would just keep that uh, same sensation. So say the butt of the club to our sternum, let's just say it's 20 inches, give or take. Keep the 20 inches. How's that be number one? Number two, number two and three would be on our backswing. Our head stays on the wall, so our body stays the same inclination to the ground. We're not raising up. So head on the wall on the backswing, and then head on the wall, get on the follow through, same thing, keep the inclination constant to the ground. So if we keep our inclination constant to the ground and we keep the radius locked in, I could swing back and through and I'd hit the ground every single time. Yeah. Impossible to not hit the ground. Right, right. And so let's, uh, let, let's say part number one, the radius length. Yep. And I really like that visual that you presented there for someone. I'd say there's really two simple ways to look at this. Yep. One would be what well, you mentioned, which would be the butt of the club so let's say your, the, your stomach, Stern, or yeah, sternum, sternum. whatever. I said, I said 20 inches as, right. a, as a rough estimate. And so feeling like that distance feels as though it stays the same on the way back yep. and on the way through. Correct. And if that does, like if we take our setup, we yep. go to a top shot or a thin shot, yep. we're looking at the distance that the club is on the ground, right? Let's say that's gonna change yeah, for whatever yeah. reason. Whether you flex your arms, flex your wrist, the distance of this shoulder mm -hmm. to the arm, to the hands, to the club, whatever that distance is. Yep. If that remains the same and we tilt well, the club's gonna always hit the ground, Correct. right? Correct. And so one of these things is breaking down, whether we feel this radius staying the same or the distance between the butt of the club and the body. Right. That'd be a beautiful starting point for someone. Right. right. Just keeping that part locked in and hitting the ground. Yeah. I would say that'd be a good one. And if we shorten that, like if you hold, hold the club out, see with your left arm. So it, let's say this distance that we have between here, the hand, and this. If we shorten that, this is the ground here. Yep. And let's say you bend your left arm too much. Well, if I do something like that, obviously the club came off the ground quite Got a shorter, bit. shorter, right? It's shorter. 
So that's going to be hit the top of the ball, miss the ball, thin fat shot. Yep. And I could do that by flexing my elbow. I could do that by flexing uh, my wrist. Yeah, wrist. Like you, too, you could keep your arm straight. Yep. You could keep your arm straight, and as you're hitting the ball, you could bend your wrist upwards and shorten the radius that way to top it. Yeah. So like if that going back to the rod, right? Right. If that was a sort of steel rod from your shoulder through your hand, club, et cetera, and that distance stayed the same, that's gonna be part one of me hitting the ground consistently. Yep, and then just to take that part a touch uh, farther is when I'm setting up, my left arm's ahead of the shaft right here. Mm. So my left arm's ahead of the shaft. When I would finish my swing, my left arm's still ahead of the shaft. Yeah, love I don't that. wanna have any bending or any breaking of the wrist because then my arm would be behind the shaft. Love that. And in terms of the tilt there, yep. right? To keep, let, let's, let, let's again keep things overly simplistic and say your chest or sternum is a certain distance from the ground. Yep. And keep my body and torso the same distance to help the likelihood of hitting the ground. Yeah, head on the wall. Head stays on the wall we started with. With the, the shoulder. shoulder going down, right? Left shoulder going down. And then as we come down, we simply reverse that. Reverse, yeah, head on the wall, then the right shoulder yeah. is lower than the left. And Perfect. I'm still in my tilt. So I'm still the same inclination to the ground. I'm not raising up at all. So the left shoulder going too high, shoulders turning too flat in the backswing, or right shoulder too high, shoulders too flat in the follow through, could be causing an issue. Would you say, Steve, like 80 plus percent, yeah. maybe more, that hit a thinner top shot, one of those two things is off. Oh, definitely. To some degree. 100 percent. Yeah. And uh, he could be conservative. I would say it's 95%. Okay, good. Yeah, I was being a little too nice yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so someone, like, let's say you hit a, a top shot or a thin shot, um, regardless of recording it or going through those pieces, starting with the, the length of the trail arm, right, the radius, and the shoulder tilt, head staying on the wall, uh, probably fixes a lot, m most a, everyone. A large chunk of it yeah. it would fix. And so let's say someone wanted to start with just the radius. Yeah. All right, Steve, I get that. I'm going to start hitting some balls. How do I start? How do I know if I'm doing it well, correct? It's like chipping. You know, you, get, you chip, your feet are close together. You put the hands slightly forward. Yeah. Left arm and shaft's locked in. You just literally chip the ball, hit the ground. Right? Yeah. Hit the ground. Bingo. All yeah. in the air, right? It's, that'd be as basic as it could get if you just wanted to at least acquire the feel yep. for that. You get your sand wedge and just chip the ball out, hit the ground, get it to pop up. And they're feeling like that distance is staying the same. Locked in. Yep. Locked in. And now let's say they can chip 130, 40 yards good. Yep. Then maybe we just lengthen it 60, 70, 80. Yeah, then we would do the same thing. Keep this left arm and shaft locked in. Head stays on the wall and I would just pop the ball out. Yeah. So my arm and shaft are in line yeah. and I'm still in my side tilt or my head on the wall. And one of the things, maybe let's turn your face in this way just for a sec, Steve. Yep. Swing you, toward, yep. Yeah, if you do the follow through one more time, I think in terms of keeping the lead arm in front of the club yep. to be able to see. If I were to draw a line down where Steve's arm is. It's a head. It's a head of where the shaft is. Correct. And if we would, let's do a bad version. Yeah, so there's the club, obviously way past. So my arm's straight, which it's supposed to be, but you can see on my arm, my left arm is behind the shaft because my wrist cup, that's the upward motion. And so someone who does that, right, someone who has that in, yep. they would want to be punching these balls out, feeling the lead arm staying in front of the club longer. Yep, yep, and there'd be no breaking of the wrist. Yeah, right. And we're doing that at a punch level shot to start and then gradually building that up into longer. Correct. So let's say they have trouble with the shoulder tilt during the backswing, mm -hmm. right? Like, hey, this feels normal. I don't, I don't feel like my head's coming off the wall or shoulder tilt. What are some initial one or two feels they might feel? Just, it could be as simple as lead shoulder down. Yeah, lead shoulder down. You could, you know, if you're playing in golf in a golf cart, pop out of the golf cart, take your, uh, take your grip without a club, put your head right on that black pole there yep. and just push against that. That'll keep your head right on that on the backswing where, where you're not popping up. It's a yeah. simple way to do it. You Quite know, right? literally put your head on some form of wall, yeah. right? Or well, object. I mean, you have the golf cart right there, pop out, put your head there. I mean, my tilt, I didn't raise up. Yeah. And if your head comes off the cart, yep. whatever you would likely need to feel to stay on the cart would put you in a position that's probably fairly normal. Right. And you'd have to feel that when you hit. Yes. And so, the, you know, co common things for someone who goes too flat would feel, they would need to feel the lead shoulder working more down. Yes. It might even feel like your head motion works a little more this way. Pushes, usually. pushes towards wall or even lowers yeah. to the ground. It could feel that way. And then obviously we're ideally recording this with video. We just want to draw the line on the front of the head, keep the head on it. Right. And during the downswing, if a golfer's head comes off or the shoulder goes too flat, they would just feel the reverse of those backswings. Correct. Trail shoulder more down. Yeah, so right shoulder, right shoulder would be lower. Yeah. The head would be tilted to the right. You might, if you want to do this one, your eyes are like at a tilted angle to the ground. Your eyes aren't level to the ground. They're yeah, tilted. Like that. 
And so for someone like baseline level, they might hit a couple shots. And if we were going to put that together, I would feel I, I set the radius at address, lead shoulder down, head on the wall, trail shoulder down, head on the wall as my arms extend. Perfect. Right? And That's I would right start motion. with those. Yep. And then I would monitor that ideally via video. I'd see when I finish, where's my club at? I mean, you could, right, yeah. right. And just what's the ball doing? Just hit the ground. Even if you hit a couple fat ones, remember this is about tops and thin. So if you're right. hitting the ground and fatting some, that's fine. You're doing the tilt good. You're doing your arm and the, the, the radius proper. The goal is to hit the ground. Right, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, keep it simple. Right. Yeah, okay. So I like those. I mean, I think that that is fairly straightforward. Yeah in terms of what someone needs to do. There's always an art to the doing part, the execution part, but hopefully that gives some initial starting points to be able to monitor how is my arm length? Am I turning my, do I have the tilt on the way back? Do I have the tilt on the way through? So you guys can start practicing that. And then as always, right, if you have an issue with it and you need more feedback, check out kogornogolf.com. Go get an in-person lesson with Steve. Let a, a coach help monitor that, that process. But those will be the parts, especially if you've been thinning it and topping it for an extended period of time. Start there, exaggerate those pieces, and that should really help your solid contact. Hey guys, thanks for watching today's video. If you liked the video, do us a favor, click that like button down below, it really helps us out. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And if you do want some more personal coaching from Steve and I, we would love to see you at kogornogolf.com. We're gonna put two cards on the screen. One of the cards here is gonna be a similar video to the one you just watched. Give you a little more detail and info if you like these YouTube videos. If you do want more coaching, wanna check out kogornogolf.com. We'll include the logo here on the screen. Go ahead and click that and we'll see you there.